Good morning, everyone. Hey, it's day 114 on the trail. Uh, I just left the shelter. I'm about to start back on the trail. Uh, goal today is the Lookout Hostel, about 11 and change. Uh, big climb in the morning, and then fairly good uh, travel after that. Um, Pennsylvania, New Jersey border. 61 miles to go to get to New Jersey. So that's the trail I'm going north on. Everything uh, in my pack is a little damp. Not so much from leakage, but just from the humidity that was in the air. We got a lot of rain last night. So uh, it was good to be under a roof. The shelter was eh, passable. No, didn't seem to have any mice problems or anything like that. So uh, that was good. Um, flush toilet in a shed <laughs> across the yard. So uh, I'm hoping the trail's not going to. Excuse me. Hoping the trail's not going to be too muddy. Um, and uh, that's it. You know, and hopefully it's not too rocky, but we're going to be hitting rocks soon. So I got to mentally prepare for that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we've had rocks, but from what I understand, the, the rocks uh, near approaching the, the top third of Pennsylvania is pretty bad. So we'll show them to you when we get there. All right, I'm onward. I just stopped to take a water break. And just up ahead, I heard a tree fall, which makes me wonder if I'd been up there, would it have been close to me? I don't know. I'm not even sure if it's on the trail, but it's the trail goes in the direction I heard. Anyway, so I'll check it out and let you know. No worries. The trail took a quick left shortly ahead, away from where I heard the tree fall. But it does serve as a reminder to since nothing was going on at the time, to be careful where you pitch your tent and be alert while you're hiking. All right. I think I'm up near the ridge on Hawk Mountain. There's the trail of Hawk Mountain. If you want to go watch the hawks migrate in the fall, it's supposed to be one of the premier hawk watch places. Uh, so... Uh, as the wind hits the mountainside, you get a lot of thermal uh, updrafts, and uh, the hawks use that to gain height. Look what we have here. Okay. That was a red EFT. E -F -T. <clears throat> it's the life stage of the red spotted newt that lives on land. Uh, the newts breed in water, the eggs hatch. The newts live for a short while in the water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then they convert to a land stage and they go out on land and go traveling all over the place to find another body of water. That stage of life is anywhere from, oh, look at this. Now that it rained, look at, we're getting a bunch of them. Now, that land stage will last three to five years, at which time, oh, there's another one. Look at that. Come on, move around, guy. I like when you guys move. Come on, skedaddle. Uh, after that land stage, they go back to water and convert to a newt again, completing the cycle. The advantage of this is if they all stayed in the same body of water, Eventually, 
the gene pool would get stagnant with the same genes and you'd get a lot of inbreeding issues. So by traveling to another body of water, a new uh, DNA uh, set of genes is get introduced to a different body of water. That way you're always uh, avoiding that inbreeding issue. So it's a good way of keeping the gene pool fluid and not stagnant. So cool stuff. It's been so dry lately, none of the salamanders and the Fs have been moving around. Now that it rained last night, they're going to be moving all over the place. I've seen about five Fs already. I hope no one steps on them. So I kind of push them out of the trail, try to encourage them to get off the trail. A lot of hikers won't even see them or care. Or I won't say they won't care. They just... They're just hiking and looking ahead. Look at this, another one. Told you. They're all going to be out today. I uh, just came through Big Rock Scramble, or Boulder Scramble, and I ran across this. A bunch of them on the ground. Chestnut husks. They're old ones. The only thing I think I've seen is some stump sprouts there. There's a dead tree there. But there is this one back here. I'm going to drop this. But you can see the spiky case the chestnuts come in. I'm looking at this. It's dead up there. And the, this other tree fell on it. Yeah. I see some branches on it with chestnut leaves. Okay. Uh, you can see the canker from the disease. So this one got the breeding age. But see how... I just ripped it. See how wavy the edge of the leaf is? So this might... Oh yeah, and see how small the uh, the teeth are? This has probably got some oriental chestnut, Chinese chestnut in it. That's what made it last so long. So, I'm just looking... See, this one's got the right teeth. This one, coming out from that big dead tree, doesn't really have very prominent teeth. See that? That's the difference. That was a Chinese chestnut, or highly, a lot of Chinese chestnut genetic, that's how it got that big. Interesting. Yeah, that's the trail. I've been fighting rocks off and on. Tell you, it's slowing me down big time. And it, it hurts to making videos because I'm looking at my feet all the time instead of looking for stuff to talk about and, and discover. So, sorry about that, folks. Pennsylvania is going to be not the best video state. Certainly not this last 60 miles. Oh, and this this isn't even the bad stuff yet, I understand. All right. There we go. I've been seeing a lot of chestnut. So, oh, I'm tired. It's 11.30. I had my lunch a little ways out of view, a little ways back. So, I got about five miles to go to the hostel. Here's one you haven't had yet. It's an aspen. But because of the size of the teeth, it's called big tooth aspen. All right. 
The way to tell aspens and poplars, not tulip poplar, uh, is it's a roundish, hardish shape uh, without a dent here, but a roundish leaf with a point. But notice the petiole when I turn it, okay? See how it's flat and perpendicular to the leaf? Okay. Flat and perpendicular to the leaf. That's characteristic of quaking aspen, big tooth aspen, cottonwoods. They're all in the uh, poplar family. All right. And that's what gives them their quivering. Because no matter which way the wind comes from, it catches either the, the, the petiole, the stem of the leaf, or the leaf itself and makes them shake. And this one just shows you some of the colors on it. In the fall, they take on a golden yellow color. It makes them very, very uh, popular in uh, pictures and stuff. Okay, this is Big Tooth Aspen. Okay. I'm at the Lookout Hostel. Bump the light. Well, and that's why they call it the Lookout Hostel. And no idea it was right next to the road, though. I don't know if it's that building or this building. Okay, dining room, living room, community room, back here is a private, private room, Here's the kitchen. Stuff in the fridge. Very light resupply. The bunks are down here. <clears throat> oh, my foot hurts. Stepped on too many rocks. I'm going to take that lower bunk right there. Couple doubles. Shower. Laundry. And bathroom. Not bad. Can't complain. I'm going to put a pizza in the oven. Then I'm going to make my bunk. Pizza for dinner. Or for late lunch.